My name is Eva Suarez and I'm currently a student in high school. Although I'm a pretty normal teenager in the sense that I like to sleep in on the weekends and binge watch shows on Netflix, my life hasn't always been the same. When I was in sixth grade, my mom was diagnosed with stage four melanoma. If you know anything about cancer, you know that stage four is not good. She immediately had a surgery to remove her right lung's upper lobe, which would essentially leave her cancer free. However, she and my dad decided it would be best to go to the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, the mecca of cancer treatment. There, over a period of six months, she received chemo biochemotherapy every two weeks or so, which is a revolutionized chemotherapy that would rid her of any remaining cancer cells. In December 2013, we were all happy to celebrate that she was finally in remission. However, my story did not end there. In fact, it was just getting started. When I, in August 2014, after months of struggling and complaining of having a bad sprain on my leg, I was diagnosed with stage four osteosarcoma. For those who don't know, osteosarcoma is a rare type of bone cancer, of which there are only 800 diagnosed cases per year in the United States. But having lived through my mother's diagnosis, my family and I were ready to fight. We immediately packed our bags and left Mexico City to go to the United States, where in Houston, I would go to the Texas Children's to receive my chemotherapies and the MD Anderson to have surgeries that would remove the tumors that I had shrunk. To those first hearing my story, it will sound horrifying. It sure was to me. But ever since I got my blood drawn, even before my first treatment, I was really unwilling to fight. On November 3rd, 2013, I underwent an internal, an internal hemipelvectomy, in which my primary tumor would be removed, along with my left pelvis, half my femur head, and half my sacrum. Here is a scan of my hip before and after a surgery. On next, the next year, on February, I had a bilateral thoracotomy in which a surgeon basically deflated each lung and manually palpated to feel for any, to feel for any um, tumors and scoop them out. However, as you can probably imagine, trying to find 15 tumors in each lung is not an easy task. I won't even get into how terrifying my chemotherapies were, because to be honest, those memories are kind of groggy. To those first hearing my story, it will sound terrifying. I mean, it sure was. But I can honestly say I had a great time. My parents and I, we grew inseparable. My dad, the first time I went, we, we were in Houston, he told me to think of my, of my treatment as a sabbatical. And it really was that. I even got my parents to bring my dogs from home to be with me. My parents and grandparents, we grew inseparable and I kept close contact with friends back home during the year, which made, made me feel better, and most importantly, not isolated. When I was feeling better, I had lessons with my chemistry tutor, Juliana, who had studied chemistry and biology in college. Being surrounded by so much science in my day-to-day -day life, I found that I was, that was what I wanted to pursue. I wanted to do research at the molecular and cellular level, and try to say, and try to understand the meaning of life. I like that with science, you can understand every concept from the smallest phenomenons like atoms to the biggest things like galaxies. To me, cancer was actually this gift in disguise. It gave me clarity. However, can, can society portrays cancer as a synonym for death. When my mom got diagnosed, I was terrified. I thought it was my end with li of life with her. And at the time of my diagnosis, Fault in Our Stars was increasingly popular, and I had no hope about my diagnosis. But ever since that first day I got diagnosed, I had this sort of gut feeling that I was just going to be okay. I was ready for this. It was not just going to be another statistic or number, because if you look at the statistics for stage four osteosarcoma, they're not good. I am still grateful to this day to, for my dad that he never let me look at the osteosarcoma's numbers because to be honest, I wouldn't have made it. 
I believe that my situation is more than just chance of numbers. I feel that my place in space and time are what led me to break this. I kept cl close contact with friends back home. However, I knew that people talked about my story as if it was this sort of Greek tragedy. People I had never talked to in my life would post pictures on Instagram of me, and the comment section was filled with sad faces and broken hearts with emojis. I was in a very vulnerable position, and seeing this broke me. I feel this wasn't the right way to portray my situation. I wasn't just another old person with just some terminal disease. Rather, I was happy. I had time with my friends, family, and dogs. I was being who I wanted to be, the purest form of myself. I didn't know how it would be coming back home. When I, when, when I due to my hemipelectomy, I had to spend the majority of the year in a wheelchair. And when I left home, the house, people would stare at me as if I was this sort of alien. But I didn't let it bother me too much. I had this totally different perception of life. However, just before starting school, it hit me. What were kids going to say when they see me walking around in a wheelchair or in a walker or being bald? I was so afraid of what people would say. I hadn't had any contact with any normal kids for over a year. And my per new perspective of life did not bring me enough confidence to feel okay. So when I started school slowly, I tried to see what, what people were talking about. And I discovered that I could barely relate to what anything of my classmates were saying. While they were talking about their crushes or their classes, all I could think about was when I could go home to sleep or whether I could, my newest scan showed any evidence of disease. I loved having classes and I loved being with my teachers, but I had such a hard time understanding the material. Studying for a quiz that would usually take me five minutes took me five hours instead. Then, keeping up with my teacher's expectations, I simply had no energy to give my all to their classes. I, although I had my close friend group, after a few months of trying to fit in, I realized I wasn't just going to be able to have another, be part of another friend group, as the social norm at my school for some reason dictates. I was going to, be, to have to branch out, try talk to new people, and most importantly, try to relate to what they were saying. When I was in chemo, I proposed to myself that I would give my 100% to my school and my goals. I wasn't going to focus on any superficial things like parties or relationships. Rather, I was going to get where I wanted to be. As the years have progressed, it hasn't been easy to keep it that goal and task. When I was in 10th grade, after being more used to what was going on in school, I, I struggled a lot with obsessive behaviors and anxiety. I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. I constantly would have very vivid memories of myself being sick, and I was in this state of doom all the time. But after reaching out for help and going to the psychologist and trying out new means to help with my anxiety, like mindfulness or medications, I slowly regained control over my mind. Although it has been close to five years since I came back from Houston, the, long to the road to recovery has been long, as you can probably tell by now. My priorities nowadays include getting good grades, getting into a good college, and doing my physical therapy, but I still never forget what it has taken me to be here today. I am one of the few people that get to tell their story, and for that, I am so grateful. One of the biggest lessons I've had to learn for, to fight, for fight because of fighting for my life is to take, be, understand the little things in life and why they are important. I mean, I get to sleep in my own bed tonight, and for that I am grateful. I don't get to sleep in a hospital room receiving infusions like I was during my birthday and New Year's Eve. I get to live life, and no matter how the problems that arise in my day-to-day -day life, yes, they're uncomfortable, but at least I get to experience that. That is the biggest lesson I can give all of you. Never take for granted what you have. Not, not in the morning, never take anything for granted. And never give up, no matter how hopeless your situation seems like. Because I clearly didn't. Thank you all for listening. <laughs>